What's going on, everybody? It's Derek. And it's Doug. And it's Sam. We really need to establish a who goes first, second, and third. I think it goes. Er, er, I think it goes. Uh, the age of seniority. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God it's not beauty, because then I would open it for everyone. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to our topic introduction. How's it sound to you guys? Sweet. If you had unlimited money, what franchise would you resurrect, and how would you do it? I think I got a good idea. Okay, I have a good idea. But first, let's hear about our affiliates of the week. Thanks, guys. Our partner for this week's podcast is Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle is an online digital store that sells some of the most popular games from the most popular game developers. But that's not all. They also offer bundle deals that change weekly and monthly that allow you to pay a designated amount for a collection of games or ebooks that can often save you hundreds of dollars. Humble Bundle then donates portions of its proceeds to a featured charity. In addition to this awesome business model, they have also partnered with us so we get a small portion of any purchase or donation through their website. All you need to do is go to our website, scroll to the bottom of the page, and click the Humble Bundle Partner logo and shop for any games of your heart's desire. Thanks, Humble Bundle! Back to you guys. Let's move on to the YouTube roundup. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. So first up, we got the Japanese pool billiard player. Gives himself <laughs> hilarious, crazy interview. <laughs> this is the best thing mm. I've ever watched. Mm. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, at first, I was like, that guy seems like... I, at first, I thought he had lost. But then it was like, well, you won. And I was like... At first, I, because I thought he lost, I was like, that guy seems kind of a little, like, not a gracious loser. And I was like, he won. And I was like, oh, he's just messing with him now. Well, yeah. Well, he said, congratulations, me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best part about it, though, is that you're sitting there and you're like, is he pulling the person's leg the entire time? Or, and then you just realize, it's like, he has no idea what he's saying. He's just like, yeah, I know a little bit of English, so I'm going to say what I know how to say. And then <laughs> I, he, he had the confidence, I mean, <laughs> go See, for it. I See, need him as a life coach. <laughs> See, I thought he did know what he was saying, but he was basically pranking the interviewer who had yeah. no clue what was going on. <laughs> so it's like Either I, way, it was beautiful. It's like, wow, it's... And then for some reason, I thought he was attached to Overwatch first. Because uh, Doug had sent this to me earlier this week. And I watched <laughs> it and I was like, well, they just announced Overwatch stuff. So, you know. <laughs> you didn't even read the title. <laughs> you know, I think I was like at work or something. I hey, don't know. To be fair, like a lot of YouTube titles have nothing to do with the video. Yeah. But I just love the fact that he's just so happy and confident. <laughs> Can we also talk about something that's even more amazing? There's a pool and billiard championship. <laughs> that nobody watches. <laughs> it's, it's one of those... On like ESPN 8, the Ocho. They have like darts or something like that. Well, it's like lacrosse. It's like there's professional lacrosse leagues. And it's like, I have never heard of anybody like in a regular conversation just sitting around the table talking about things that they do and be like, yeah, the other day I was watching the professional lacrosse league. I can tell you why we are not wow. rich enough. <laughs> we <laughs> do not fair. live in Virginia. That's Although fair. to be fair, I do remember a time at Boyce when like the winter Olympics were going on and everyone was watching like figure skating and curling. When you sit in the cafeteria, curling becomes the most interesting sport and you become your own personal commentator. I yeah. mean, I just would imitate curling by buffing the floors and then just getting a bowling ball or something and having it and throw it down the way. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that'll work. That that racks up a lot of housing fines, though. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, I mean, who would totally do that? Uh, uh. <laughs> who would get accidentally thrown through the wall, Derek? Uh, was that me? Uh, you and Shelby were wrestling, and you partially broke a wall. That's right. And then I kicked a wall. My roommate threw a ball at a wall. The walls were not in good condition. 
<laughs> didn't they discover? Didn't they not find you though because of a water leak that was discovered because of it? Yep. Nice. <laughs> Avoiding the consequences of one's actions. Oh yeah. Speaking of government shutdowns, how, how's that faring for you guys today? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I woke up. I made breakfast. I went about. I checked the or went online. I mean, I have, water. Water. <laughs> I, have, I, have, well, I have running water, I have electricity, I'm breathing, and I was still able to drive and go to a restaurant today and, like, play a video game and then find out halfway through the day, oh, yeah, the government shut down last night. And it's like, oh, cool. See, Neat. here's I have a different story. As I was driving to the store, I had to dodge the looters and the, the Molotov cocktails being thrown around on the highway. And I was like, you know what would be awesome? Stopping at a national park, only to find out they were closed. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, saying, today's probably one of the better days. I played Dark Souls and I beat the cursed, like the cursed rotted Greatwood, and got a couple Estus flag flasks. In fact, the game glitched in my favor. Well, what? <laughs> uh, for the cursed rotted Greatwood, you have to attack little pods and little seeds that grow on him. Yeah. But when you destroy a certain one that's on his belly, it like goes into phase two of the battle, and you drop down into a pit, and you know you like Gandalf and the Balrog it up. However, the game glitched, and it, none of the pods would destroy. But those are his massive weakness. So even though I'm like not doing a strength build, I was able to hit him for like a hundred points each. Nice. So it's like ah, just stay in his like. You know that zone on big monsters where you're standing right underneath its chin going, hit me, I dare you, come on? Yeah, <laughs> I was doing that, and I beat him. Nice. First try today. <laughs> Just because of the government shutdown. And then, of course, I was like, ah, thanks, Trump. No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I got the transposing kiln because of Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, moving forward. Speaking of weird anomalies in the timeline, uh, can I go ahead and introduce our next YouTube roundup video? It is it. Tales from the Loop RPG trailer. Yes. It's a new tabletop RPG I want to buy. Not you want to buy, you're going to buy. Yeah, I mean, it's basically Stranger Things for a tabletop form. Yeah, I went through and I got that. I watched it earlier, and I'm like, this is basically Stranger Things. Wait, have you seen Stranger Things? Okay, let's, not talk about this. <laughs> let's, let's not talk about this right now, guys. <laughs> I think that's way more interesting now. But <laughs> Sam hasn't watched Stranger Things yet. <laughs> no. Well, it, to be fair, it did take me forever to do that, too. It took me about a week until Stranger Things Season 2. Yeah. Um, but it's basically like the Large Hadron Collider. Yep. Uh, creates anomalies in time, and I'm, I wasn't sure if the robots were natural already there or it's set in a weird version of the. It's it's Fallout to the eighties as Fallout is to the fifties. Okay, that makes sense that make actually. Sense? Or it's like, oh, we have. These large hadron colliders underneath, like, Boulder, Colorado, and, like, Stockholm, Sweden, and, boop, now we have dinosaurs, and there was big robots, and it, it looks pretty cool, but the coolest mechanic I'm really interested in, your characters can't die, because they're kids. You don't kill kids in an 80s movie. This is true. So what happens? Do they just get grounded and can't leave the house until... Um, they can get badly wounded, and you could word it as they get grounded, yes. Nice. They get <laughs> and they grounded. Get grounded. <laughs> they get grounded with ground on top of them. Yes. <laughs> Six feet of um, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have your, I, like, your personal item. So, like, let's say you're playing as, you know, you're playing as, well, I would use Stranger Thing references, but Sam hasn't watched it. Um, we'll go with, like... You're 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 playing as the geek. You're Wesley Crusher, like okay. back in the eighties. You let's say you have your, you know, uh, let's say your personal item is your bag of quarters. You can't lose that item, no matter how bad things happen. Like, 
let, you have a bag of quarters in your skateboard, your skateboard can be smashed to pieces. Your bag of quarters, you're never far wrong. So it's Indiana Jones's whip and hat. Yes. yes. <laughs> also, another thing cool on the character sheet, you have to pick your favorite 80s song. <gasps> That's amazing! Oh, yep. <laughs> yep. That's amazing! Yeah. <laughs> I am more in love with this movie than I, I think I've ever been. Or this uh, game. But it's just really cool because it is... I don't want to say capitalizing on this 80s nostalgia we've been hitting recently. But, but it absolutely it's because, is. Yeah, it does. Um, something int- I want to ask, is, since you seem to know more about it, is there actual like weapons, or is it all like improvised? Like, I have a hockey stick. That acts as your sword. Uh, you have like a hockey stick, and that's you know, your, your bat. Things like that. You use improvised... Weaponry. So okay, so you're not gonna like eventually go through the lab and you pick up a laser bazooka. It's like mm, yeah. your kids. I mean, theoretically, you could have, you know, if it's thematically correct, your character could have found, you know, your dad's handgun. I mean, that's poor, poor gun control. And you know, <laughs> it is the safety. '80s. It is the '80s. There wasn't any 80s. such thing as gun control. Like gun control was using two sense. hands. Kids also had common sense. Yeah, don't bring it to school and don't wave it around like an idiot. Except in the actual video, uh, like, that I was watching, so, from the YouTube video itself, it shows, like, this young girl aiming, a, like, a revolver out in a field somewhere. I'm like, okay, so the kid has a gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because, remember, this is also the 80s, which is, you know, you can't say that, it, you know, ah, uh, what was it? Christmas Story, Ralphie had a... BB gun. Okay, BB gun, gun. There's not that much of a hop and a skip. If you're out in the middle of, you know, nowhere, you kind of need to use know how to use a gun. There is kind of a big skip and jump from BB gun to, like, 44 Magnum, though. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. Giant <laughs> robots and dinosaurs running around. I think true. <laughs> that Red Rider's not going to do anything against a T-Rex. Do, 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 no. do, do, do. Yeah, except alert it to where you are. <laughs> but if I learned anything from Jurassic Park, all you got to do is just stand still. Yep, right? So, anything else about these? The public bathrooms. Yeah. yeah. No, here's the thing. Don't be a lawyer. That's a problem. True. Don't be scummy. We could introduce that. The computer coder was pretty scummy. Yeah, like I said, don't be a lo- no, don't be a lawyer. Nice. Anything else about right. these two? Um, no. I mean, I'm interested in buying Tales from the Loop. I am too. Like, I'm not a big RPG collect book collector, but it seems like something I could be like, hey, go to my coworkers and be like, well, hey, let's play a 20 minute like part of a story. Well, here's the thing, it's based on an art book. Ooh. Like, all the art that you see in the, like, video, mm-hmm. that's art from this one uh, artist, and they just based a game around it. That's awesome. Right? <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. You gentlemen ready to go to the main topic? Yes, sir. I believe I am. Okay. Once again, the topic is, if you had unlimited money, what franchise would you resurrect, and how would you do it? Let's uh, just first state the title of the game that we would have redone, and then uh, then we'll talk about it. Sound good? Sounds good. For sure. Okay, Sam, do you want to go first? Sure. I would say mine would have to be Pandemic's Mercenaries, um, the franchise. I thought that for the time, it was pretty awesome. Okay. Doug? Uh, Lufia, the entire series. Fair point. I, for one, would like to go back to doing Bomberman. Bomberman. Yep. Ooh. And I, there is a caveat. Going, we'll move forward into caveats and how we do it. Uh, not the old school like Bomberman R, Super Bomberman R, that was on the Switch. I want like Bomberman Jetters, Bomberman Generations, like an arp, almost like a level based um 
Did you either of you play Bomberman Generations or Jetters on the GameCube? Or the uh, Bomberman 64? I did not. Uh, I did. They and were. you know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was true. They were basically... You had different maps, and your bombs did circle damage. Instead of going up and down rows and columns, hmm. they would explode outwards, and like you had to hit switches, and you had to blow up trees to make bridges over water, that sort of thing. And I'm like, I would love to have something like that again. Because would you bring back the Higgy Higgy Bandits? <laughs> yes, absolutely. 100% I'd bring back the Higgy Higgy Bandits, the uh, Crush Bombers, and I would bring back the car bombs. The cool. um, so okay, you were talking about pandemic. Uh, that was a board game, wasn't it? Uh, the mercenaries by pandemic. So pandemic got swallowed up, unfortunately, by EA. Rest <laughs> in peace. But the mercenaries game came out for I believe Xbox originally, the original Xbox and PlayStation. Um, I believe you're correct. Did but. Basically, it's a third-person um, shooter game that you would go around. Basically, the first one was North Korea and South Korea basically get finally get into a war. So the North Korea invades South Korea, and the United Nations gets involved. Oh, big deal. Well, you're a mercenary that gets hired because there's like contracts on every North Korean official in general in the area. And basically, your character goes around um, this open world, picking up contracts, killing or basically killing North Korean soldiers and helping out the Allied forces. But you get to decide who you're siding with with the Allies, whether it's the South Korean army, the... Uh, Russian mob who's in the area that really wants the North Koreans out but also wants to make money, or the UN. So it was pretty awesome. You got to drive around tanks, you got to pick up weapons, and had a pretty cool storyline too. You know, I vaguely remember a demo of this. I vaguely remember. That would I mean, be pretty good. The thing I was thinking of Call of Juarez, I was thinking of. Never mind. Yeah. The th reason why, where I kind of would start there if we wanted to go into detail, or I wanted to let Doug go again a little bit more, but as far as how where we would start if we had the money to do so. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, didn't want to cut you off, man. Sorry. <laughs> nah, it's all good. <laughs> so where I would honestly start with that one is GTA Five was really successful as an open world like just multiplayer game. Can I make a correction? Yes. It's not was. It still is. Well, it still is. I mean, I don't understand why it still is, because even though they go through, it's still a Grand Theft Auto game, and I, it's just not one of those ones for me. But it's kind of that same exact idea, where basically you're a gun for hire, but you also are held to standards. Because you work for this company, you can't do things like shoot innocent civilians, because you get penalized for that number one everybody gets mad at you and number two you lose money which is kind of like a i, I would have led with that one <laughs> yeah a reason not to shoot that <laughs> shoot people <laughs> but the idea behind the game itself is that you could have a whole bunch of just random mercenaries around this map and it's obvious this next this guy next to you could totally shoot you because it's every man for himself and i just am in it for the money kind of deal that and you know there are random places around the world that are always like hot spots and you can pick up the next war zone pretty easily and make or make a game out of it would hey. you uh have an online feature like like gta 5 i believe so because i believe that it's easy to be done because it's easy to understand why there's another guy next to you gunning for the same dude because it's like hey i'm trying to get the bounty on his head not you, so then you're kind of left to duke it out over, hey, am I going to get this guy, or are you going to get this guy? So, basically, you want GTA V without the interaction with the ladies. That and without drug trade, for the most part. <laughs> oh, if you are working at the Russian mob. Well, yeah, well, they, it was weapons trades with them. You okay. have to, well, so you have to we, make sure. I, 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 you know, actually, that would be really cool. Um, considering that I've actually almost rebought GTA Five just because of some of the DLC and stuff they've done. 
Oh, yeah. Like, you could have, like, a giant base, but bringing that into mercenaries, that would be really cool of, like, you have a... You have the money, you bought a base inside of North Korea or inside of wherever. Um, it would be interesting if you could go into multiple different conflict areas. So, like, you could go into North Korea or Middle East or South America or Mexico um, or Canada. Or um, Detroit. <laughs> or, yeah, or Detroit. Um... It would be really cool if you could basically take a plane and go to those areas. So it's kind of like changing maps. Yeah, and you could go through and... I kind of get the idea of... You remember when World of Warcraft came out? Yes. Finally. As far as when it came out, you know how you would have these... Like, random places that would be super overpopulated with new characters or anything else along those lines. And the way they got around that was they just created different servers. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to join this server. Yeah. They can handle so many people. I would think that it, you'd have to make it work like that because having 100,000 mercenaries in just one single, like, combat zone, that's kind of overwhelming where it's like hey there are a hundred people in this map that's the size of gta 5 and it's like hmm they're all going for the same guy but you have to tr track him down that would be more of a challenge in my eye so it's kind of like uh you want to mix gta 5 and PUBG? yeah let's try that <laughs> <laughs> i would buy it me too actually um because like i think that's what something that needs to be done is gta 5 is not an amazing shooter it's an amazing driver. Um, like a driving game. It's top notch. Oh, but yeah. sometimes the shooting, you're going, Ugh, this isn't working. Um, so if you mix something like Call of Duty, Battlefield, that sort of thing, into it, that would be really cool. I'd be all about it. And maybe because it's really hard to explain because it's been such a long time since I've played it. Uh, I'll probably have to go through and do a playthrough or something of it. So Sounds good to me. Understand what's going through, but hey. Here you go. Can't really complain. So, Doug, now, do you want to do you want to expound? Yeah. Um, if you're familiar with the Luffy games, I know you are, uh, Derek. Yeah. Have you ever played them, Sam? I played one. Was Specifically, it... I think you played two. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably uh, Rise of the <laughs> was it Rise of the Sinistrals or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great game. Great game. Yes, it was. Um, like it was a solid game by Atlas and I honestly believe that if it had been given enough time and love it might have really changed how we view RPGs because when it came out we were looking at Secret of Mana uh, Breath of Fire and as much as the Super Nintendo was the RPG like heaven that also means that that's where they died yeah because I do know that, like, Lufia tried to come out with, um, whatever it was on the... Runes of Lore, and, uh, there was another one for Game Boy Color, and I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. But they weren't great. Runes of Lore arguably was, it just didn't get enough coverage. Uh, okay, I'll agree to that. But here's how I would make it better. I would combine Lufia 1 and 2, and you play it in chronological order... Because Lufia 2 should have been the first story, I believe. But Lufia 1, The Fortress of Doom, was the second one or something like that? Yeah. Um, so you kind of want a Golden Sun it. Where you yeah. have one uh, game lead... Golden Sun. Yeah, you yeah. have one game immediately pick up immediately where the other one dropped off. I wouldn't even put credits. I would just say it's one long game. And just say, you know what? These were good games, and that's where I'd start rebuilding the franchise. Mm -hmm. Is I would retranslate it so that way you have better translation. You know your capsule monsters. It's not tea that they're drinking. It's I think it's actually liquor that they're supposed to be drinking. Yeah, um, they had ciders, but they were hard cider. Yeah, and then I would recode the unknown dungeon and the labyrinth, and I would actually put in. And this is going to be the crazy part. You know how the floor, like the labyrinth, was procedurally generated, 
every time you went in, it was random, right? Yeah. This new franchise would be on the Switch, and okay. here's where it'd be great. You can build your own, you know, set of floors and upload them to Labyrinth Net. When you go in, it will download 100 random levels made by players who are given a budget to build the get to build the uh, dungeon. I like it. And here's the thing. You know how there's monsters in there? Yeah. In the dungeons? Well, here's how I would work that. You can only add the monsters to the dungeon that you've encountered. Ooh. And it will, like, it will populate. So if you're on, like, level 99, even if you just say, oh, I put only slimes in this level, it mm -hmm. will scale them up. So maybe they won't be like regular blue slimes, but they will be, you know, mega slimes. Or they will be blue slimes that have the stat of a boss. I like it. And that way... It... I don't know but... how I feel about a blue slime having boss specs, but hey. <laughs> well, I mean, even if it's like... Even if they palette swap it. Got it. And so that way it does have a bit of... You know, you have to make that dungeon... And it would be interesting because it's not just, oh, there's only so many, you know, iterations of the dungeon before you get to one that is 100% perfectly beatable. On, on occasion, the dungeon just may not populate the items you need because uh, of random chance. I you think Go it ahead. wouldn't do that intentionally. It would give you over the seed... But if you don't pick up an item before you leave the floor, you can be messed up. So, like, let's say uh, level 5 populates the uh, grappling hook. Okay, if you skip that chest, you're done. You have to restart the, like, re-100 100 levels. But as you go further, you obviously have more progression items, so that chance decreases. I actually disagree. I, I have a way to fix it. Is basically okay. much like Mario Maker in the 100 Mario uh, uh, mode. Every level has to be beatable. Right? If you have a gimmick on that level, right. on your dungeon level that you created... Well, here's also the thing. The game, do, you do not tell the game what is in the treasure chest. You just say, there's a treasure chest here, here, and here. And you do have to beat the level... But you are also given, okay, if you do need the flail to open up the door, it will, rend it'll, like, uh, Legend of Zelda, the randomized seeds, it'll say, oh, it's flail locked. So you ha it'll put it later in the progression, past when you get the flail. I, However, I, if the second level has the flail, and you skip that because it's not required in that level, that floor... You're kind of messed up. That sounds great, but what happens if you miss something on floor 5, get to floor 99, it goes, oh yeah, you should have got something back on floor 5. You can't go backwards. Now you're actually cheated. If I was playing that game, I'd put it down, never pick it up, and go, I did everything I was supposed to. I beat, <laughs> 90, 90, I beat 99 Rage. floors. I am not doing this again. That's why I said, make it so that each floor can be beautiful. If you have a flail-locked door... The, the game goes, okay, the flail can be found on this floor. Boom. That How way, about that way you have it to bookmarks you every five levels? No, nope. then you're losing your then you're losing the momentum of oh I can just go back to floor five, it's fine. There's not the I have to go explore the whole floor. If you got something it's... I would also say that it does prevent the Oh, like because it is on the switch, it is portable you do want to have some sort of measure of you can put this down and continue it, rather than when it was on the Super Nintendo, oh, you're not going anywhere because you're on a console. Hmm. Maybe. How about How permanently collectible items, we'll say like mini metals from Dragon Quest. Okay. That when you start a map, when you start a new run, and you've collected... A thousand mini metals, it lets you purchase progression items permanently. 
I so that way, I I have a thousand medals. Cool. I can I can actually remove all challenge from this thing because I have purchased every progression item. I can just walk straight to every door. But you have to grind out the medals. Hmm. And the medals are gathered every ten floors. Hmm. It's, and it, would, it sounds good, but something in my head is going, sounds too easy to monetize. <laughs> that would, yep. would not put any microtransactions at all. It. I don't think that it would be... I think it would be bad to even tempt developers to even nope, go... I have hey. unlimited money. I can... like The question was, if you have unlimited <laughs> money, I will be... You put microtransactions, I will remove you from dev rights. Okay, fair game, fair I'll game. Take it to another company, I will take it to an indie developer, and I will pay them to have bottled water in their fridge, just not to have microtransactions. <laughs> fair game. I will water. make them the next Google. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Okay, or, when you put it that way, okay. Because I was like, because, uh. or it plus it just lets you, you know. Okay, I've beat this. I've gotten up to floor ninety nine. I just want to move on. And so you're able to grind out those medals and say, I do not have to open up any chests except wait. You still do because equipment is in there and healing items. So you're not, you're you're not going to get stuck behind a door going. How do I do that? Uh, can I suggest that the one caveat is that you you're able to turn on and off those items. So that way, if I beat it and I go, I want to buy all the items, cool. And then I go, you know what? I want to do it. I want to do it again. I'm not going. Well, I have all the items, so there's no actual challenge. I can turn off those items, and it goes. We'll throw that flail back in. What if? You beat the you know first hundred floors, great. It unlocks a new mode of the dungeon. Progression items are like will be in chests, and you cannot use your pre-bought ones. Great, you beat that mode. Cool. Now you're in you know complete darkness mode, or you have a torch. You know you you have a torch that burns out, and you have to keep collecting torches. And you it progressively you can make it harder as you beat more of the challenges. Hmm. And then you can just see it theoretically have a big long list of, you know, labyrinth net challenges that you can theoretically download have this is the weekly challenge of the week. That'd be cool. It'd and be so interesting. Way, it keeps that part of the game fresh without changing anything else in the game. Because the you know the labyrinth items, it will give you I would say one extra capsule monster, and that would be you know a really fantastic capsule capsule monster, where its only evolution items are found in the lab. Could work. And so that way it kind of gives you some extra bonuses for the actual game, without being its own reward. Hmm. It's interesting. I, I mean, I, I like the idea of reviving Luffy, yeah, regardless. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think for, like, Bomberman, go with a different, go with, like, a new story. Kind of go, uh, did you play Mario Odyssey there, Sam? Uh, like, the new one, or? Yeah. Yeah, I played a little bit, but I, I don't have a Switch, so unfortunately I haven't been able to. I think it would be kind of cool. Well, it's kind of like 64 or Sunshine. Yeah. If you played those. Or I think, Galaxy. Yeah, or Galaxy. I think it would be kind of cool uh, having a Bomberman game similar to that. I can see that. So, like, I dig it. It's an open world, and you have. You can go into them with a certain set of. Like, you have to go do this to get a star. Or the bomb element, or whatever, and boom! But you can still explore, much like Sunshine. You could just wander around, but you had one singular goal. Um, and I, as much as I liked Odyssey, I think that once you get like the star or bomb element, it should basically remove you from the level, and you can go back in. Really, 
uh, because as much as I liked Odyssey, it just felt like eventually stars meant nothing because it was like, cool, you got a star. Okay, moving on. There was nothing like amazing about it because it was like, well, you know, there's 400 of them on this level. So that's neat. They went over, they went quantity over like quality on level. That's not to say the game was bad. It was just, here's, you know, 50, 60 stars for a level and you can get 10 in 10 minutes. And it's like, these don't mean anything, do they? You know, it's like if you're constantly getting coins, it's like, well, these coins mean nothing. I can skip them. So if you see a Power Moon in Odyssey, it was like, well, I know that one's easy to go get, and I'm kind of on my way to go do something, so I'll just get that later. Does that make sense? It does. Yes. So I think with Bomberman, like, have it, like, that way, and have it more story-wise. So you can, like, go into a level, have a story, like, hey, there's a boss here, whatever, and then have bigger battles. Uh, a lot like Bomberman Generations or Jetters, where it was like, go into a level, beat it, you know, eventually face a mini-boss in the world, then a big boss, boom, move on. That sort of thing. Uh, I think that would be, uh... I, I would actually really enjoy that, because I loved the Bomberman series. Um... Super Bomberman R was kind of disappointing. Cause it was I like, like it. it was just like eh, Bomberman. Blow up blocks. You'll play with with your friends once and then you'll go play a different game like Mario Kart when it comes out. And you'll never play this game ever again. True story. <laughs> I mean how it's many not like I still do play Tetris though. <laughs> True, well, true. That's because Tetris has the awesome music in the background. <laughs> it's not even like classic Tetris. It's like new Tetris with like crappy music. Oh, well, that's your problem, man. I just have <laughs> poor taste. <laughs> you you know, I have poor taste in video games. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, like in drama. <laughs> I yeah. Oh, okay. Anything else on the main topic, gentlemen? No, I can't. I have. Oh, okay, and we'd actually, I'd actually really like, be interested to hear what the uh, audience, what kind of game they would bring back from the dead. Because uh, I feel like we're going to get some interesting answers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean Rampage, free on our let's bring back page. Rampage. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> make, Ar make Arkanoids great again. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I just want to say, we can go through and we appreciate any feedback anybody wants to tweet us we can go through we can talk about that we'll select our top three yeah hashtag not my facts of duda <laughs> <laughs> Doug on fire today make castlevania great again you, you know what that would have been my game that would that should have been my game i love castlevania um okay moving forward the weekly challenge is what is one actor or voice actor that you immediately know who that is or, how has Goku Gohan changed your life? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like, what? Did no one read that script? Like, I, well, I, read, I read it, but I thought that that was like, oh, like, how did the voices of Goku or Gohan change your mind? <laughs> well, life. when I learned the Japanese voice actors, a voice, uh, voice for Goku was actually a Japanese woman, uh, that changed my life, for I... Well, now imagine every Japanese one I see yelling Kamehameha at me. Um, no. <laughs> I mix the Go two. On. Go on. No, um, as far as like voice actors, I think there's one voice actor I will always recognize. Vic I'm Mignana. guessing it's Vic Mignana. Vic Mignana. Uh, it's like, that's Vic Mignana. Like, uh, it's one of those voices where I just know... Do you, uh, do you gentlemen have one? Or would you rather answer the how has Goku Gohan changed your life? You go first. <laughs> no, <laughs> on this one. <laughs> I was going to say Vic Mignogna, actually. But now, listening to more of like uh, Matt Mercer mm -hmm. uh, speak, because he's actually the voice of McCree in Overwatch. Overwatch. And he's also 
like a huge DM, and so he also does a lot of voice acting. And so it's like one of those like, oh, I can recognize that voice. That's it's, Matt Mercer, right? It's like, oh, hey, I know who that is. Uh, there's another one, uh, Sabat. Uh, I believe Chris it's Sabat? Chris Sabat. Hmm. Do you know that who that is there, uh, Sam? I do not. It is uh, Alice Louise Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, wait. Yeah. Chris Sabat, he did Piccolo, too, right? And I believe Vegeta. Yeah. <laughs> and he did All Might and My Hero Academia. Huh. Oh. Yep. Oh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All of them kind of have a theme. They're back yet. Uh, and there's actually somebody who was related Chris er, closely to Christopher Sabat. Like the more I was thinking about it, I was like, that name sounded familiar. I was like, why was it? Scott McNeil. Okay. He did Duo Maxwell in the Gundam Wing series. Just that distinct, almost like I guess cocky attitude, but he also voiced Piccolo in uh certain episodes, I think from like two thousand three on er, on up he went through he did their voices er, his voice but he also did old kai um but i think that was in debura um if i'm not mistaken nice but he was a well it's just his voice is very distinct i think a lot of dragon ball z characters they are distinct like i feel like they get a lot of uh jobs just because it's like well what did you do a little thing you might have heard of oh yeah dragon ball z oh you're hired <laughs> yeah could you be my voicemail <laughs> it's totally be true my voicemail <laughs> mail 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 <laughs> All right, so maybe you don't recognize where Matt Mercer's from. He was Levi from Attack on Titan. Nice. Okay. He was the male voice, human voice, from Destiny 2. <gasps> nope, don't care. <laughs> uh, Dead my friend, Shot and Justice 2? My friend would absolutely hate me for saying I don't care about Destiny 2. Um, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, he was the Witch King. <gasps> really? Nope, still yeah. don't care. Luke Skywalker in the the Star Wars Battlefront Two, the new one that came out. Why I care a like, little. Why didn't they just have the guy who? <laughs> the actual... Because maybe his voice didn't work. Like, uh, excuse me, Mark Hamill's voice didn't work. Yeah, that's, that's weird. I feel like I might have seen him in a different animated show. <gasps> that's right. He was the Joker. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was Mighty Number no. Nine in Mighty Number no. Nine. He was Mighty Number no. One in Mighty Number no. Nine. Nope. Don't care. He was Jack Cooper in Titanfall Two. Okay. A, a little better. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. He's done a lot of bad things. Um... He was Superman <laughs> on the DC Super Friends. Ouch. No, stop. <laughs> okay, let's move into some gaming news. How's that he sound? He was McCready in Fallout 4. Wait, what uh, What did you say, Sam? What? I went what? through and I said... Oh, Chris Sabat. Yeah. Or, no, no, that was that Derek. Was, that was my second one. <laughs> Mine was Scott uh, McNeil. Okay. They're like hair breadth away from each other. Yeah. Guys, Matt Mercer was Prince uh, Demande in Sailor Moon Crystal. I care a little bit more about that than the Destiny one, and I don't know how I feel about that. I, I, I really slightly judge you for that one, because I don't care at all. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, before the hate continues, let's move on to gaming news. How's that sound? Sounds yeah. good to me. Okay, in a twist and complete irony, Yamcha is ranked in the top tier of Dragon Ball Fighter. Yes. <laughs> Did you click the link? Did you click the link? Uh, I feel like I'm going to. I feel like it's changed several times already. Click the link. Oh, yes, I did. It's a 404. Yes, no, it's not true. Ironically, you suck. Yamcha's link 
is dead as Yamcha <laughs> yeah. in all so, the DBZ series, as I said. <laughs> when I wrote this uh, outline for us, that link led to one of the dramatic finishes from uh-huh. Dragon Ball Fighter that comes out next week. I'm so excited for that game. Yes. Same here. It was a video of Nappa destroying Yamcha, and Yamcha doing that dramatic where he's laying in a crater. Yeah. And that's one of the dramatic finishes. I'm like, oh, I know the perfect t- title to go with this. Yamcha ranked in top tier. <laughs> it would have been amazing if that was true, though. <laughs> Wouldn't it? But, like, it became, it, like, wrapped back around to amazing because the Link was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, <laughs> I could have corrected that and like went on to like, oh, let me go find the actual link. But I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good, fam. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm super excited. I think we're in a formal league sort of thing. Uh, yeah. I'm excited I'm for down. it. I'm down. Okay, moving forward to movie news. Uh, Doug, do you want to read this one? James Gunn says Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is coming in 2020. Nice. Yes. So, what do you think the story will be about? I think it's going to be Fallout from the Infinity War. The Ooh. Earth is now, like, it is going to start being targeted because up until then, like, the Guardians have been separate from the rest of the world, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, with them coming back to Earth, it's going to bring the Ravagers. We could possibly get the Scroll and the Kree. I kind of hope we get some sort of Ravagers thing with uh, the four at the end. Because I believe it was the robot head, and I'm drawing a blank on the name right now, was actually voiced by Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Which I did not believe until I watched it again. I was like, that was Miley <laughs> Cyrus. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. And then your heart sank a little. You know what? That is an incredible comeback story for her, though. No, wait. I was thinking of Kesha. Never mind. <laughs> but, I mean, so, I, what do you guys think? Do you think that it's going to involve, like, the career scroll? Which, if it is, I would love to see, like, them make a mention that the scroll have been here all along. And that's how they explain Don Jadle's departure from the MCU. Maybe. Oh, not Don Jeetle, uh Terrence Howard. Maybe. Um, <laughs> can I... Uh, ro- go ahead. That Rhodey all along has been a scrawl. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. <laughs> I hope that this is the last Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Agreed. Because while I love Guardians of the Galaxy, I worry that they're going to play out the humor... They uh, they uh, they absolutely amplified the jokes in Volume Two, mm-hmm. right? I worry that they're going to amplify them more. Try to capitalize. Well, Groot is no longer cute; he is teenager Groot. I worry that they're going to try to play out the humor, and it's just going to be like, huh, much like every other part in a trilogy. This kind of sucks. It's not as good as one or two. And the jokes are just going to come across as dry and just like, oh, that was expected. It's no longer funny because I was expecting Chris Pratt to say something funny. Does that make sense? Yeah, it could be. Or they could take it to the exact opposite extreme. And after the Infinity War, basically Chris becomes like a super serious person, kind of more like the actual character, the... Oh. War veteran of the comic book series. Like, he uh, he realizes that it's no longer just joking around, flying around the galaxy, and stealing batteries. It's like, this is real business. Yeah. Do you think Drax is going to die? Ooh. Because as characters go, like, he hasn't got a lot of exposition and a lot of character change. So, if he were to die, say, fighting Thanos... It would make Volume 3 a whole lot more serious, um, because there's, one of their own has died. There's a better way to uh, end Drax that absolutely helps bring his character into a different light. Is if he dies saving Mantis, 
someone he he has said flat out he does not like, but he saves her and realizes I liked you a little bit more than I thought I did, and nope. s- then saves her. Then it changes Drax's character and makes him more heroic and not just the guy who goes and gets swallowed by a monster to stab it from the inside. He actually like sets aside, like I want to say bloodlust berserker style. And actually steps in front and does, like, a defense. Well, if you go back and watch Volume 1, Drax has already lost his family and kid. Yeah. So if Drax dies fighting Thanos for his own reasons, and not for not for a like half-weird romantic subplot that doesn't need to exist... What if uh, Thanos was going to kill Mantis so he can combine, combine the two? I still don't like. I don't like him dying for Mantis. I just like Drax. I I want to see that Drax, for no matter how powerful he is, he's pushed aside by Thanos. Just he's doing this. He keeps going up against him. He keeps getting knocked back. He is Goku fighting Cell. He eventually dies, and we we don't have time to mourn him. But we can get a bonding moment between Tony Stark and uh, Chris Pratt by Tony going, "Look, I've lost, I've lost loved ones too. I've lost friends and family. I know how it feels." And that's how we kind of get away from the Guardians being on Earth and go back into space. Of look, I know you have to deal with this on your own. But you know we're here. You can talk to us. I like it. And then it kind of ropes back up the where was Pepper for Civil War. It could be that... She was a scroll. (laughs) Something something happened. (laughs) If you go back and read some of the uh, producer notes and director notes, Pepper was supposed to have been pregnant. Whoa. Did you know that? No. Yes. So, if they just do a nod to that and just say, I've lost loved ones too. And then you have that, like, moment, because they're roughly the same age. That's true. So, and, you know, plus, you know, Tony's lost both his parents, like Chris Pratt, like uh, Star-Lord. I you like could, it. You could play a lot on that. I like it. Sam, anything on this topic? Nah, uh, I think. Okay. Why don't you go I'm ahead and tell us about the anime news this week? Yeah, so... Pull this up here for us again. Sorry about <laughs> that, guys. I just closed out of it, too. <laughs> uh, so, Humble Bundle is currently offering an Attack on Titan bundle. Or bundle. Blah, blah. Bundle? Bundle. For a donation of as little as $18, you can get digital volumes 1 through 22 of the Attack on Titan series, as well as the Guidebook and Spoof on Titan volumes 1 and 2. So if you go ahead and if you jump on it before the 31st, you can save a whole lot of money. But also, since Humble Bundle is now one of our partners... You can use the link, which should be below this video. If not, you can just go through the link on the website to our to Humble Bundle. And you can give us a kickback as well. Exactly. Yes. Uh, quick question. Is Volume 22 the latest in the manga? That is a great question. I believe I not it is not. But vol- 1 through 22, I believe, covers the first arc, if I'm not mistaken. Regardless, even if it is just the first arc, there's a lot of content in there. And uh, as someone who's read the con- the uh, manga, it's amazing. Uh, I am a huge fan of Attack on Titan. My wife so there's 24 be. volumes. <laughs> it's what? There's 24 volumes. Nice. Okay, so you're almost there. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, for 18 bucks, I really can't beat that. Okay. Go ahead. Remind me after. Remind me after we hit re- done recording that I need to buy that. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. Releasing this week, we have the Inpatient for PS4 and PS Vita. Or, I'm sorry, PS VR. Yep. On, 
on January 23rd, which will immediately be eclipsed by Dragon Ball Fighter for Xbox One, PS4, PC on January 26th, and Monster Hunter World on PS4 and Xbox One on January 26th as well. Having pre-ordered digitally both Dragon Ball Fighter and Monster Hunter World, I am in such conflict of which one I'm going to stream first. Have you played the beta of Monster Hunter World yet? I have played the betas 1 2. I played the beta this morning and could not beat Nier Gigante. Nice. <laughs> Sam, are you going to be picking up any of these games? Uh, I was probably going to get Dragon Ball Z. For because, PC? Yep, for PC, just because, you know, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, and I just haven't played any of the video games, believe it or not. Except for, okay, I take that back, Legacy of Goku on the Game Boy Advance and Legacy of Goku 2. Nice. Agreed. I, I did get it on PS4, so... I'm trying to convince one of my friends outside of the uh, company, like, hey, we should we should play sometime. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I am super excited for two of these three games. The other one I have never heard of. So uh, The Inpatient, I think it's the prequel to... Uh, uh, Dead by Day... Not Dead by Daylight. Um, Dead by Dawn? One of those. Dead by Dawn. Huh. Until Dawn. Until Dawn. Hmm. <laughs> Words. <laughs> There you go. All right, Good gentlemen. Morning, Anything else? I think that about does it. All right. Thanks, guys. And thank you to all of our listeners out there, because we really couldn't do it without you. We hope you enjoyed this week's Gaming and Chill podcast. If you'd like to know more about the podcast, follow us on social media, or learn how to support the podcast directly, check us out at www.gamingandchillpodcast.com. Also, be sure to stay up to date with Gaming and Chill by following us on Twitter at at gaming underscore in underscore chill. Yes, that is gaming underscore in as in Nancy underscore chill. You can also find links to the articles, games, and videos mentioned in this podcast in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time. <laughs>